Hey, what is up fam? I am so pumped for today because this is episode one of a five-part series that we're gonna be doing to help you understand the blockchain gaming space and to help you invest a lot more intelligently uh, as we move on into either the, the rest of the bull market cycle or the bear cycle, right? Either one that we do. So what lesson one is gonna be about is the macro. Lesson two is gonna be more about uh, the security and the current scams that are currently going on. Number three is going to be about uh, actually how to find these research methods. So like using the research methods to find these hidden gems. Number four is kind of going a snapshot, looking through their website, going through the tokenomics. Does it everything look kind of in check? And then number five, we're gonna go into the valuations, the fundamentals, the deep dive into it. And we're gonna go over my report and then I'll be giving that to you guys. And then as a bonus, a number six, uh, we're gonna kind of go over the uh, Discord and how we run our Discord. And it's not going to be a just invite anybody now you're going to actually have to go through this course to be able to be put in because we are starting to run really hard in that discord and that alpha is starting to look really really good so we just want people more like-minded like us then we want to look to our left and our right after years um, and still see the same people around okay so number one we're going to be talking about macro today so i'm going to switch over to my screen and we're going to go over a variety of things um, that kind of makes us bullish on this market so Number one, this is a uh, article by NewZoo. It's a free global markets report, and we're gonna be talking about some of the uh, statistics that they mentioned in the report. So they've pulled over like, you know, 10 year olds all the way to 65 year olds all across the world. And this is what kind of the numbers they came up with. And they also gave a compound annual growth rate, which is called a cager uh, of the gaming space, which we'll go over a little bit. So this is uh, just kind of a overview of the uh, the space in terms of revenue and what it's kind of generating. So right now we have 88 billion coming from the Asia Pacific region. Makes sense because they have majority of the players. But here down below is also the year over year growth. So when it comes to investing as uh, as crypto investors or blockchain gaming investors, we wanna keep this in mind. So who's more willing to pay uh, money for uh, their games, right? So Asia Pacific looks like they have a huge portion. North America has a huge portion. And then some uh, ones that are growing is Latin America and Europe. And we'll go a little bit more into this. And so when it comes to games that you might not enjoy, maybe kind of check into the culture that uh, they're actually pitching to. Are these people uh, that pay a lot of money to be able to play these games? Next here is gonna be the global pairs, uh, players in, in worldwide. And this is, again, this is what they pulled. Right now, 55% uh, of the global pair, uh, players worldwide is Asia Pacific. 1.6 billion players uh, come from that area and they have a compound annual growth rate of 4.8% year over year. So that's not stopping anytime soon. So when it comes to some of these games that are focused in that region, like so Poker Fantasy or anything that like might have this kind of anime style, we might have to look more into it even though you might not be digging that, okay? Um, and then we have Latin America and Europe and Middle East and Africa growing at a very rapid rate, right? In terms of players that uh, that that need to be accessed or try to try to get have a total addressable market to go to. So Middle East, 10% year over year growth, Europe 4% and Latin America 7% or near uh, 6%, sorry. Uh, and then North America only a 0.7% year over year growth. And that kind of makes sense because all of us know about the games. We have accessibility to these games. So the people that are playing it are playing it and the people that are not playing it are playing it. So some of these are just kind of giving more accessibility to to the people uh, in their population so this is also very important for us to know and something that's very important to me is like i want to invest into a platform or to a project that has the least amount of resistance when it comes to getting a game in somebody's hand to be able to spend money right so when it comes to smartphone games or tablet games these represent 51 percent of the market right so a lot of people are playing these uh, smartphone games or these tablet games and though you might be a hardcore gamer and you're just like you know i want world of warcraft or i'm just a pc hardcore gamer i just i don't want anything else remember when it comes to investing it's very different on how you want to think right you want to invest into games that have actually a very long longevity in terms of life or anything like that so those yearly like cods and stuff like that yes they might generate a lot of revenue but at the same time too do they have like those long legs to be here for years uh, instead of maybe just just like one year or a quarter so just to kind of some impressive statistics here, right? So smartphone games and tablet games, look at the year over year growth there. So we have a 4.7 year, <coughs> excuse me, 4.7% year over year growth there. Tablet as 2.2% uh, year over year growth and console games are actually declining. So are browser games and downloaded 
uh, PC games are on a decline as well. Uh, but they're actually on an incline from last year. So pretty cool. So just something for, for us to note, right? And so here's the global forecast. And this is something that I wanted to kind of drill into people. This is why I'm the most bullish on NFT gaming space. And this is where I think mass adoption is going to be coming for crypto is because of this forecast, right? So currently we're sitting at around 2.96 billion players worldwide. And in four years or three years, 3.32 billion players worldwide. And so when it comes to total addressable market, how much, how much can, can games uh, have, right? Like, you know, it has to slow sometimes. Well, right now, uh, 3.32 billion is the compound on your growth rate of gaming worldwide, right? And and I want to uh, bring up some other things right now, in terms of uh, uh, these type of statistics. So, generations report. So Gen Zers, 81% of them uh, play games, right? And that's uh, even impressive. 42% of baby boomers play games. And so when it comes to all of these games and stuff like that, understand this wave of gaming is is not over. Um, and it's something that we need to keep track of. But the most, the, the reason why I'm most bullish, so we have 3.32 billion uh, players currently or are about to have in, in three years time. Look how many gamers are actually playing blockchain games. So at its peak, at its peak, we've had 1.2 million players playing these blockchain games. So when it comes to total addressable market, right? So we have 1.2 million going all the way to 3 billion. That's kind of your range in terms of your total addressable market for the crypto gaming space. And something you have to note here, it's not just uh, somebody you're trying to convince to play games that's not a gamer. It's already people that play games that are already converting their fiat to some virtual currency such as Roblox, uh, Robux or BC for Fortnite or any of these. They're actually now going to take the fiat that's gonna be, that they're gonna be usually converting into a skin or, or a, gun that like gives them no value or no ownership into a crypto game that gives them ownership over their assets so they actually can have own it and then sell it on the secondary marketplace. So just just understand that dynamic. Uh, no gamer in their right mind is going to want to uh, uh, to give all their ownership up if it's another option not to, if that makes sense, okay? Last thing to note before I move on into lesson two here. Uh, video game sales in the United States in 2018. So this is obviously a little bit skewed uh, because it's it's battle royale games really. It, battle royale games were a big thing in 2018, but not as big as they are now. But here we have broken down by like uh, type of genre when it comes to video games. So that's also something you need to have in the back of your mind. So when you're looking at action shooter role playing, so what appeals to the most type of people, right? So. Um, that's that's very important. So if you're super into racing, just understand you might not be the or you might not have as much growth in that area. So when you invest into a token or invest into a project, there might not be as much growth because there's not that much of an audience for it. That's just something I kind of want to bring up right here. And uh, just breaking it down here by that the amount of revenue based off 173 billion uh, in 2020, I believe. Uh, and this is just kind of broken down. Uh, based on the percentages that here are by Statistica, and I just put in uh, put in the numbers uh, based on the percentages. So, 45 billion in revenue currently in action game shooters is 36 billion, role playing is 19.62 billion, sports is 19.1 billion, adventures 3.7 billion, fighting 13.54 billion, racing 10 billion, strategy 6 billion, other is 7.9 billion. So, something very important for you to understand when it comes to investing in these games. Have this as your fundamental principle. So whenever you're looking at games or somebody tries to challenge you, it's like, why are you investing in the crypto gaming space? Tell them that statistic. 1.2 million players are currently playing blockchain games that are actually getting ownership for their assets versus 3 billion of that total addressable market that might be coming in 2022 uh, and 2024. So it just is it's a no-brainer to me, but you, this is for me just educating you, right? I'm giving you the facts, what's currently going on in the market right now. You have to make a big boy, a big girl decision based off the knowledge that I presented you if this is worth to invest into or not, okay? So this is lesson one. I hope you guys uh, thought this was interesting or at least a pretty good solid foundation for us to build upon as we move forward into the next lessons. All right, that's all I got. Peace.